Uh, both saddled with kind of uh, underperforming decks overall. Roy, I guess, isn't the worst, but Shaman in particular, I don't think we've seen a single Shaman up to this point. Um, it's definitely one of the worst uh, classes, even with the, you know, kind of upgrade and the uh, the totem archetype coming into play. Uh, but yeah, as we were saying before, the player <laughs> typically the strategy is to just get to the finals and kind of hope that your opponent got to the finals via the same strategy. Uh, and playing. that you both have, you know, decks that aren't that you aren't the best with. Exactly. And uh, yeah, so starting off, we have the rogue versus the mage. Don't know what kind of mage it is quite yet. Uh, but yeah, no tomorrow on the bottom with that rogue and big Kimmy on the top. All right, well, big Kimmy or big three Kimmy. Big three is his team. Did Kimmy's his name. Did I call yeah, him big did. Kimmy again? Yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> well, he's going to be as the uh, mage player on the top and uh, his tempo, or not tempo, but mech mage, uh, as we can uh, already see. Even though we can't see his hand, but we are going to be able to see a uh, relatively standard, should be oil rogue deck from. Uh, no tomorrow. Let's see how well he adapts to playing a deck that he probably doesn't play all that often. Well, we don't completely know that. Um, I think most pros are... Actually, he didn't have a team at the uh, the China qualifier, qualifiers, but um, anything anyone who's uh, capable of playing this level, I think, has played a decent amount of Rogue. Um, it's just one of the, the better decks, or was one of the better decks, and it's still uh, relatively um, strong uh, right now. And uh, picking up that SI7 agent, pretty good pickup for No Tomorrow on the, well, on turn one. But I uh, didn't have it in his opening hand, so that's kind of nice. And uh, also has the Earth Ring Forest here. The good thing for Kimmy is that he was able to get his, ooh, wow, okay. So he got the Powered Shredder on, uh, perfectly on turn three, and then perfectly the Goblin Blast Mage on turn four. So uh, it turns out both players are blessed with really good hands here. <laughs> Wow, yeah, uh, blessed is a good word for it, because uh, that mm. is uh, fairly fortunate. This is this is back and forth, by the way, Rapid. <laughs> this, okay, all right, I, I see how it is. This is this is um, both players having amazing hands and going back and forth. Like, no, wow. I, I have an amazing start. No, I have an amazing start. No, 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 I have an amazing start. <laughs> and it uh, looks like it's going to slow down a bit from here, kind of these players running out of things to play. We might see a naked clockwork night if nothing picked up. Uh, nope, gonna be the Fell Reaver, <laughs> just kidding, but there is the uh, wow. Sap in the hand of No Tomorrow. I imagine we're gonna see, yeah, probably fan into Sap. You get as many cards of the opponent's deck as possible. And uh, picks up Shredder on the following turn, which is kind of nice, but um, if its opponent just plays out that Fell Reaver right back into the board, I'm not gonna have really much way to deal with it. Yeah, I mean, who in conceptualizing Fell Reaver is just like, I'm going to make, what, what is the cost for a 5-mana 8-8? Eight, eight? Uh, it's like, hmm, I'm going to make this guy draw 8 cards, uh, discard 3 cards. Uh, and in the course of that turn, he just wound up draw, discarding 6 cards. And, jeez, now he's going to be doing it all over again. Is there a way to clear this off the field easily? Uh, does not look like it. Yeah, I actually do like the design of the card. And as he picks up the sap with no mana to play it. Wow, enough. okay. <laughs> I like the design of the card because it can single-handedly win you games and it can single-handedly lose you games. So, um, pretty cool, yeah, actually. You, you play it and your opponent has like six one-mana cards in his hand. You're just like, <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, man, that is heartbreaking sometimes. But this time around, the Fell Reaver will stick. And this next turn, uh, he's going to be able to get off a little bit of damage with it, with it. But will it be enough? Goes for the extremely high percentage play of getting... <laughs> well, I guess he could have cleared out with a Man of War worst case scenario. But yeah, wants to get as much damage to face as possible with that play. So going for the Frostball first. And then the Goblin Blast Mage. And looking pretty horrible for No Tomorrow. Big gimme. Looks like he's gonna get the last laugh here with that, um, uh, by, by, you know, getting the perfect hand. But I guess, uh, well, I, maybe I spoke too soon. No Tomorrow isn't dead quite yet. He gets to sap this, he gets to get some health back, but still looking grim despite all that. Although, how many cards are left in this, in this, or excuse me, in Kimmy's deck? Uh, he's discarded, uh, 12 cards so far, and he's on turn 8. Plus, he drew one card earlier, so he is, uh, Probably has like 10, 12 cards left. Oh, it would be less than that, wouldn't it? Um, You're only on turn 8. So yeah, it would actually be maybe like 7 cards left. Yeah. Um, in any case, uh, whatever happens here, No Tomorrow needs a way to be able to deal with this Fell Reaver. 
Uh, Big Kimi, obviously, he's seen those two saps, so gonna make it as hard as possible um, for No Tomorrow to deal with this board. Um, even gonna put the Noe Chan down the field. Just make sure that nothing can really attack into that fell We're protecting as much as possible. Because... Man, No Tomorrow <laughs> visibly <laughs> distressed. He like sinks back in his chair. He's like, ah, oh, come on. But uh. I don't think. I don't think there's any way to come back from this 14 health, but no way to kill that 8-8 eight, eight Fell Reaver. Yep. Um, and obviously he's dead on board. Filiar uh, is wondering at the moment. <laughs> um, I guess what you could do, could, could you actually draw anything with Drake here? I don't believe no, so. There's, uh, you could draw Preparation, but then... Yeah. Even that's not... Super great. He's gonna be able to backstab to get rid of the uh, the Anoyatron. Well, he's gone through Big Kimmy's deck, but he's also taken a monumental amount of damage from. Uh... Oh wait, what can he do with this? He can. Oh, he can clear everything but the Mana Worm. <gasps> wait a second. Has he found Are you... a Oh, because he has spell power. Oh, I didn't nobody, know. nobody can't kill the Mana Worm because he doesn't have a dagger up now. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Um, so 9, 10, 11, 12, he's, okay, so Big Kimmy is 1 damage off lethal, but he has a hero power which does damage, so, I think this is gonna go to Kimmy anyway, so close, so no tomorrow, I can't yeah, believe Yeah, there's, that. there's no way that you can make him draw out of cards, is there? Yeah, if you can make him draw 4 cards, or, <laughs> or whatever, uh, that would've been nice, but, um, yeah, so sad, he was so close to clearing that board. Um, if he had just been able to charge in with that, uh, saucy deck, and if it was still, like a battle cry, you know, if you have a weapon equipped, yeah. <laughs> then, uh, oh no, but, uh, so close. I, I called that game maybe, like, eight times for Kimmy before it was over, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, really, actually ended up being a really close game in the end, but, yeah, Fell Raver, really, really strong card. Yeah, especially strong, and it really plays towards a, a mindset that most players don't have, like, the, the, the reality that you are going to discard 90% of your deck just to be able, maybe it's like 60% of your deck, just to be able to play this card, like you have to be super confident about that. I don't feel like most players play with that level of confidence, but to be able to say, look, this is my win condition. I'm putting it down not once, but twice and, uh, well, I guess three times with the double <laughs> saps. <laughs> but uh, he made it work and finally got off the attacks that he needed, so congratulations Big Kimmy. Up one <laughs> game to zero. Big Kimmy, yeah. Um... Yeah, I definitely, I mean, I I definitely feel like the more experienced players realize the value of having that Fell Reaver on the field. Um, I've gotten, like, questions in my chat when I was playing um, a, that version of Mech Mage, and Fell Reaver was, like, Fell Reaver did not lose me a single game, and it won me a bunch of games. And they're like, wouldn't you rather have something other than Fell Reaver? Like, no, what are you talking about? This is this card's great. And the same thing happened in Firebats chat as well, where they were like, wouldn't you rather do something with Fell Reaver? And you can just feel like, you know... The player saying like, no, I don't want to discard cards, but in the end, it just ends up being so ridiculously powerful. But, um, yep, uh, we have a classic Zoo versus Rogue matchup, and I say classic even though we haven't seen it uh, for yeah. a while, but uh, it used to be all the rage, these two classes. Yeah. And this is a uh, one of the best starts that you can get from a, a demon lock deck uh, to go turn two uh, egg into turn three uh, void terror, and now all of a sudden you're dealing with a total of seven health or seven damage and nine health on the board. Can the uh, the uh, the rogue deal with this? Uh, it's going to be difficult. Well, he can deal with it over the course of many turns, um, but. I mean, now he's facing an even bigger problem uh, in this Void Caller, which is going to take out, or bring up Moganis, uh, if he so chooses. And, um, yeah, it's going to be a bit of an issue. I think he pulls it out now. Well, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, wow, he, uh, Big Kimmy actually, or Kimmy, rather, just played into the Void Caller, so I don't... Uh... I don't know if that's necessarily the play, but maybe a little bit over eager to just go for the Malganus play now. Like it feels really good to get a nine mana card out there, but uh, I still think Argus. You get so much value out of just playing that. Yeah, the dream is to get the value out of this Argus and then get the or sorry, yeah, get the value out of yeah. having the Argus trade well and then get the Malganus, which is really nice. Um, it could get sapped. We will see. I mean, obviously there's no sap in the hand of Kimmy, but that's something obviously that no tomorrow will be concerned about, but. Uh, Kimmy's gonna have a very nice clear on this board, and then he's gonna be staring right at Moganis. 
Wow. Uh, yeah, so he's going <laughs> to hit in and then go for the board clear, and then all of a sudden, like you said, yeah, Malganus appears, and he is a little bit sad about that. Uh, does he have any way to deal with the Malganus next turn? I mean, you've got, uh, you've got Oil, got uh, Burgle, get that Execute. <laughs> Uh, I like this play, by the way, by uh, No Tomorrow. I'm not going to go tap. Just going to put more pressure on the board. This is how you beat Rogue. You don't give him time. And uh, he knows there's no sap on the side of Kimi because he would have played that rather than playing this Earth Ring Farce here. So 6-7 on the board, 9-7 on the board, a couple of 1-1s on the board. Looking good for No Tomorrow. Yeah, and Kimi is thinking to himself. He's like, huh, I'm a Ganis card. Needs that sacrificial pact. No, it gets the Wilfred Frizzlebang and a fearsome uh... Doom Guard. <laughs> <laughs> Not what you want, and no oh, tomorrow's man. gonna take it. Seen some big cards in those aggressive decks today. Wow, yeah, and it, especially off of Burgle. I don't think we've seen good Burgle cards today either. <laughs> uh, granted, we've only seen it like what twice. This is the second time. Actually, but, Wilford uh, Frizzlebang is such a horrible card if you think about it, because you can only get cards discounted off your hero power. Right, so you have to both play it and then tap and then. Well, be able to play the card. In particular, you can't. It doesn't work with Rogue. You just have a six minute four four. Well, no, because you, you can hero power, correct? No, you. But you, you. In order to get the next card discounted to zero, you need to use your hero power to draw a card, and you can't use the Rogue hero power to draw a card. It's just a card. Oh, that that, you, oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. So it doesn't actually work. Yeah. Wow. So you, have, uh, you just have a 6 mana 4 4, which is garbage. <laughs> but in any case, we're going to have a nice classic Rogue Mirror. I actually really like this matchup. Um, the Miracle Mirror used to be kind of crazy because whoever got their gadgets in off first won. But this matchup can uh, definitely go uh, back and forth, which is our phrase of the day. Uh, if you haven't been paying attention. But uh, the reason why it goes back and forth is because there's a lot of removal, obviously, on both sides. And there's a lot of incentive to remove uh, the opponent's board because of the potential for burst uh, when you leave something on the board. But that said, sometimes one player can kind of go for broke and kind of push damage to the other side. But then there's things like heal butt that actually keep keep players in the game. So it can go on for a long time and have for some crazy turns. And I think there's a lot of skill involved in yeah. this matchup. So, so I was thinking D2. You get Wilfred Fizzlebang, and then you play Sideshow Spell Eater. <laughs> the combo. <laughs> to copy your opponent's hero power, and then you just dumpster him with free minions. Like, <laughs> at, that, I mean, at that point, if you're relying on RNG <laughs> over for Fizzlebang, you might as well just get Sacrificial Pact and kill the, kill the Morganus. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, now we're into game number two. It's going to be a rogue mirror. So now we get a chance to see burgles that might actually work. <laughs> yeah, when you burgle a rogue card, you are going to be able to use that rogue card. Uh... Yeah, as a rogue, I feel vaguely confident about that. So now we'll get a chance to see maybe some more success there. But uh, as far as the early tempo game goes, uh, it's actually going to be really good. And whoa. Ooh, wow, gets the spell damage perfectly. For that, uh, that Wrath Guard. It's ridiculous. Wow. Wrath Guard takes three damage for free and then deals that to his uh, his champion. That's uh, his hero. I, I, I don't know what else to say, man. That... <laughs> Who says you can't backstab the face? <laughs> you can indeed backstab the face, D2. So, uh, no, yeah, no, no tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, dude, that, that's basically lethal right there. Uh, there were some bugs in the very, very beginning of Hearthstone when it first uh, when it first released, where if you did the uh, a perfect, like, I think it was like some weird death rattle combo where you also put the card back in your hand at the same time, it would bug out and win you the game instantly. Um, obviously, that was fixed extremely fast, but it's still like, you know, there were ways where you could just, like, do a combo that was so devastating, you just won the game. But I, this is pretty close to that. But uh, he's not quite there yet. And Tempo back in No Tomorrow's favor. Then we'll be able to clear the board. And uh, let's see, is there any way that Kimmy can get back into this? He's got Sap in his hand. Uh, yeah, what? Sap. Yeah, Drake is actually one of the better things to Sap because it's a really clunky card in Rogue. Um, but it looks like he's just going to go for the uh, Emperor Thorison because, I mean, looking at that hand, you know, 5557. Five, Three, two, two. You want to make these things a little bit cheaper, and um, he has the antique heal bus, so it's a bit of time to work with. And you're probably not going to be seeing, you know, any sort of, any sort of burst uh, right now out of uh, no tomorrow because you know um, things like 
excuse me, uh, the uh, Tinker Sharp Sword was pretty expensive. In any case, double spell damage, Phantom Knives, pretty nice in this situation. <laughs> And his spell damage is just adding up. Really, really cool to see uh, that working so effectively, efficiently, and that's what Rogue is all about. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> kind of scary situation for Kimmy to be in. Uh, he's going to have a decent blade flurry here, especially if he can put down spell damage first. Yeah, that's exactly what he's going to do. Um, could even do double spell damage. I probably, well, yeah, you might as well go for it, right? You might, you might as well just put the blood mage down, get that extra damage to face. Um, because you're not going to be able to use one mana anyway. Yeah, there's and, no real, uh, there's no five health uh, rogue minion that they play, is there? Uh, um, there's the violent teacher and the Lotha, but you can't kill the Lotha on that turn. But yeah, you right. definitely just get this on the field. You have another spell damage in your hand anyway, and uh, rogue always wants cards. So anytime you can get a guy on the field that can just cycle. Uh, and get more damage on your opponent's face. You just do it. There's no real. I mean, there is a kind of consideration like, oh, I have this car this one mana card in my hand that I can use to get spell damage whenever I want. But uh, just cycle it. Yep, gonna go ahead, cycle it out there, and shouldn't be too difficult to uh, you know turn back around and get that board back in his favor. Gonna go ahead, and sprint first though. Uh... See what he draws into. Oh, there's another preparation. So a lot of things that can be done this turn, but most likely just going to work on clearing the board. Yeah, ironically, when you when you prep sprint, one of the things you want to pick up is another prep, uh, because by prepping and sprinting, you're kind of using your entire turn or most of your turn to draw cards. And uh, one way you can gain back that tempo is by drawing the other uh, prep. So. Um, actually a really good draw there for No Tomorrow, and this is what I mean by um, this this matchup being back and forth, because, I mean, both players have just, you know, been kind of clearing each other's boards, and it uh, looked like it's going to be in No Tomorrow's favor, and then Kimi drew cards, and then No Tomorrow drew cards, and now they're at s similar life totals, and they're going to have similar boards, so, uh, yeah, definitely a matchup that's really, really interesting, and just always, you know, people clearing each other's boards um, back and forth. Yeah, I was about to say that is uh, pretty close to the definition. And I, to be fair, it's probably a little bit more common in rogues just because they have such great ways to clear the board, to you know put things back and forth in their favor. Um, but uh, heal bot advantage, I guess that's something to talk about. Um, generally not something you really want to sap back to the hand because that is a whole lot of health. And with one heal bot down, the, the health totals are equal. But that does mean that No Tomorrow still has that in, uh, in his hand. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what goes on. And yeah, he's going to sap the Shredder and put, uh, put Kimmy up in a uh, pretty good spot. Yeah, this is Kimmy's uh, turn to kind of push uh, for lethal here because... Uh, he's putting the Lothab on the board, which means, you know, uh, obviously No Tomorrow can't do anything but play minions. I mean, he could play spells, but they'd be really, really clunky to play, obviously. Um, so this is what you see a lot oftentimes in this matchup, is one player decides, okay, this is the turn, play my Lothab, my opponent can't do anything. Uh, in this case, we do see that uh, No Tomorrow has actually a decent play here, um, referring to that Shredder and that heal bot to kind of uh, get himself out of trouble. But uh, still an annoying situation to be, you know, having no way to deal with your opponent's board. All right, well, uh, yeah, the ways to deal with this board include, uh, yeah, going to be heal, heal bot most likely. And it is a good mana turn because he can also play that Shredder back down there. And there's no sap to deal with it. He does have uh, the ability to clear the board, though, even just on board. Do, so. we, do we have lethal from 27 here? Hold on one second. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, so Stop 11 it. and then... Plus seven, or sorry, plus three is fourteen, and then plus six, twenty. Uh, yeah, yep, it's gonna have twenty-eight damage. Twenty-eight. Well, My then, um, God. that's uh, that's 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 damage Dude, right this there. This is the this is the OG patron warrior. You thought patron killed you in one turn, and that was <laughs> disgusting. This is pretty darn disgusting, and this is why Oil Rogue was so popular back in the day. Uh, uh, wow, uh, I think he even had more than twenty-eight. Um, no, I think it, we were correct. It was. Oh yeah, yeah, because it was one over. Okay, I was thinking he could uh, blade flurry there, but nope. Uh, wow, what a uh, what a turn! And <laughs> Kimmy comes back, and that is going to be a two-one score with no tomorrow. The you know Chinese Hearthstone BlizzCon World Tournament representative uh, about to get knocked out of his uh, this tournament. So going to be Shaman though, and traditionally Shaman is the class that players are most reluctant to play against. Although with the advent of TGT, there's actually a lot of really cool cards that have augmented its play style a bunch. Yeah, that is true, but uh, Rogue is still going to be a pretty heavy favorite here. 
Uh, always has been, actually. I mean, there were a couple... There was, like, a couple weeks here and there where people invented or innovated some Shaman decks that were good um, against Rogue. Kind of put a lot of pressure on early, but... Um, these days, particularly with the more late game oriented deck that we see Kimmy have with that Neptulon in hand, uh, probably going to be pretty rogue favored here. So, um, unless we see an upset, we're probably going to be seeing a nice old Shaman Mirror in game five. Nice old Shaman Mirror. Good old. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's ever been a, uh, a position in which, you know, nice uh, Shaman Mirrors have happened in competitive play. I'd be interested to see the last time that uh, that happened in a tournament. Uh, just because Shaman is, it's always had a few problems with it. I mean, I mean, back in the day, Neptulon's release maybe made them come back just a little bit, uh, and then nobody played them <laughs> again. So unfortunately, um, I don't know. It's uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this fares. Uh, it is still a very fairly decent uh, Shaman deck. It's got that Neptulon we were talking about. Uh, also has, uh, uh, yeah, the ability to buff. Shoot, uh, okay, I'm, I'm yeah, trying to get a feel for what this is supposed to be because it feels like a little bit more of an old school yeah, shaman. Deck. Well, I, I think it's pretty much a mid range deck, but he drew all of his late game, is what it looks like. Uh, I mean, obviously, you're always going to have the Fire Mentals, which are just too good. Has the Thunder Buff Valiant, which is nice. Um, but I think the Neptulon and uh, that Alakir are the late, their later um, game options in his deck. He just happened to draw them here, as we see the Tuscar Totemic mm -hmm. drop out right now. Yeah, Alec here in hand, maybe not the, not necessarily the card you want to draw early. And to be fair, he probably drew into the high half of his curve. Yep. Uh, so Tuscar Totemic, though, that is the card, like you said, uh, that we were talking about. One of the biggest uh, buffs to Shaman because you can just start to put out so much on the field. And uh, sometimes you get super lucky and it spawns like a Totem Golem, which is a 3-4 down there on the field. That's pretty good to just get for free. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was surprised that No Tomorrow was so reluctant to play with this SI. He had many turns to use it, and uh, he's being a little bit greedy, honestly, in my opinion. Um, not playing out this SI uh, when he could have definitely for several turns. Looks like he's probably going to come on this turn and finally kill off a totem. I mean, killing off a totem is actually pretty worth it because it's a lot of tempo. You're killing off um, what your opponent invested two mana into, and you're getting a 3-3 three, three on the field. doesn't feel the greatest, but now he's just going to get killed by the Fire Elemental when he could have been doing a lot of work earlier, and really there would have been no totems on the field because he would have been clearing them every single turn. Right. Uh, it doesn't make tons of sense, but uh, I mean, there's only one totem on the field right now, so maybe that comes back to bite you, but a perfect turn six there. Uh, really, really... <laughs> that's about as good as it gets. Uh, at least that's where you want to use your fire elementals. Uh, clear out the 3-3, three, three, get board control, and now, I guess it's not totally board control, because it is clearable this turn. Yeah, but I mean, no tomorrow isn't actually making headway on this board. He's just kind of re right. responding to his opponent's minions, which is strange, because his opponent... I mean, he, he had nothing to play until turn 4 when he played a 3-drop, so you would imagine that No Tomorrow would have just kind of taken board control the entire time. Um, if he had played down his 3-drop earlier, we know that he would have been in a really great spot um, because he would have been just clearing the board and you know getting damage to face, but uh, it looks like he just got a little bit too greedy and allowed Kimmy to be in this game. It would have been a really sticky situation for Kimmy, honestly, um, if uh, No Tomorrow had gone for that, but... Now he's just playing from behind. I imagine we're going to see a sap on here because Neptulon is a 10-mana creature. So, um, yeah, going to put that back in the hand. Going to discard a card. Uh, Earthshot going away, not the biggest deal, especially against Rogue. I'm um, not going to be if, seeing Van Cleefs. Yeah, if you were going for something like the Mill Rogue, you'd be able to uh, not only just straight-up kill Neptulon, uh, but, yeah, the card discard is going to be pretty good. And, like you said, because it's a 10-mana creature, you won't be able to just replay it again. Yeah, I mean, well, technically it's 7 over 3, but it's going to be really clunky. And uh, you're probably going to see other things like, you know, that Alakir or that Fire Mental in future turns. And um, now we see a big board on the table. Are we going to see the Blade Flutter here is the question. Wow, yeah, it's actually going to be a pretty huge board. Lots of Murlocs coming down there, too. Um, and so, yeah, Blade Flurry, uh, Fan of Knives, if he draws into another one of those. But, yeah, Blade Flurry, uh, it's, it's hard not to go for that. But you don't really get that much value off of it because you're just clearing trash minions off the board. Yeah, it looks like he's going to hold off and just... Uh, I mean, he's clearing most of this board anyway, which is a backstab. He's going to develop his Lotha. 
So, um, what are we going to see from the Shaman? He's falling a little bit behind on the board. What is... Okay, No Tomorrow apparently hasn't finished his turn yet. Thinking about what to do. Um, but yeah, from Kimmy, he can play actually the Murloc Knight, which is one of the better Murlocs to get. But, um... Probably not doesn't want to be hero powering at this moment. Probably wants to get some more um, power onto the board, whether that be through the uh, fire elemental or uh, actually the flame tone can do a lot of work here. So I'm really not honestly like no tomorrow. Obviously is a very good player, but I'm really not like not liking his rogue play, uh, particularly in this game. I mean he could have just cleared off one of these one ones or two ones. He has the prep. He can almost certainly re dagger next turn and get off his his uh, next turn play. Um, and leaving this 2-1 on the board just allows his opponent to clear his board much, that much easier. Yeah, I, uh, confusing choices, at least made by No Tomorrow. Although, I guess to be fair, there aren't you know necessarily a ton of choices at his disposal. This next turn, he'll have a lot of them, but um, I don't well, know, I'm interested to see how Shaman proceeds from here. Yeah, I mean, I just assume, I mean, if he just cleared off one of those minions, then he would have had, uh, it would have been much, much harder for Kimmy to deal with the board. In fact, he wouldn't have been able to unless he played something like Alakir or the, uh, the Fire Elemental. So, um, looks like we're just going to see a Blade Flare here probably with, yeah. okay, he's going to attack with the, attack the Murloc Knight and clear. But, I mean, he's only going to have a dagger after this, and he's actually going to be floating four mana, so he could have actually... You know, save one of his minions on the board and been able to do this play anyway. Um, unless he was thinking he was going to draw into something big, I just don't. I don't know. I, just, I, I don't. And I can't really see uh, the rationale behind it. Um, and we see Big Kimmy. I call him Big Kimmy again. Uh, Kimmy actually taking board control and looking really bad for No Tomorrow, honestly. Yeah, No Tomorrow uh, starting to need some answers and not drawing into them. So he'll be able to sap uh, the fire elemental up, but then he's just going to take six, there are three damage more from it when it comes back down again. He's got the combo for the um, the oil, but I don't think that really does anything for him. So uh, some big question marks and about one more turn. Is he actually dead here? Alec here comes down for six, and then there's six more. Well, here's 10 right now, so there's uh, oh. 9, 10, 11. Yeah, he has lethal. Yep. So Big King is actually going to take this game off the back of some questionable play on No Tomorrow with his Rogue, and that's that's the format of the tournament. you got to play all nine class as well, and honestly, I think Big Kimmy, by a wide margin, did so. Yeah, definitely, and at all stages of the tournament, even against difficult get difficult opponents uh, he was able to make it all the way here he actually took out ice fox you know the kind of you know wannabe rival of no tomorrow so no tomorrow he's still obviously very happy he made it all the way to the finals anyway uh, but does wind up taking second place and kimmy is going to win this tournament qualify for the international finals and that's a big step yeah absolutely and i'm i'm pretty happy for him honestly i mean i haven't seen any of his play before today but i mean he was absolutely solid throughout this tournament didn't see any misplays uh had very solid lines of play throughout um and uh really just smart play and i, I really liked all of his play by all of the classes and um yeah i'm excited to see him uh play against some of the westerners all right well uh that should do it